Welcome back to another problem in complex analysis. Today we're going to be dealing with something called conformal mapping. And conformal maps are very useful not only in complex analysis but also in the real world. I'm not an applied mathematician but I understand that there are some very important applications in data analytics and even optics. Um, so it's useful to study these things and in particular uh, they can be a little tough to construct. So most of the conformal maps that we'll use will construct from other maps that we already know to be conformal. So hopefully some of the maps I'm going to be talking about today are familiar to you, but if they're not, then it's good to familiarize yourself with them. So let's talk about the first problem. The first problem is asking us to construct uh, some conformal map for some region. Uh, I'm going to call that omega sub, sub alpha uh, to the disk D. And you can look at the description there, but I've also drawn it out to the right here. And this is the map we want to construct. So there's some region, the argument of the z, the complex number is between minus alpha and alpha. So it's kind of this symmetric region in a way. And we want to map it all the way to the disk. Similarly, for the second problem, we're going to do that for a strip r between minus pi and pi, uh, its imaginary parts. Okay, so let's dive into the first problem. Now, looking at this map here, or rather this, this region, we might be tempted to say, well, z to the beta, some beta, kind of fans out regions, or uh, in another sense, it might contract them. And let's remind ourselves uh, why that is. Well, we can write a complex number as r e to the i theta, right, with this argument theta and its radius r. And if we multiply, or we raise it to the power beta, rather, then we get r to the beta, right? So some scaling of the region, and then e to the beta i theta. So if we wanted to expand it, well, we can choose beta large, and if we wanted to contract it, we could choose beta small. Um, but off the bat, we're not really sure if that will be the most advantageous thing for us. So maybe the first thing we wanna do is not use this really nifty map, but instead save it for later, and instead, we might actually just rotate this region so that one of the, uh, the, the lines here that you see on the side is going to be at an axis. And that might make things easier for us in the long run. So how would we do that? Well, in order to rotate, we know to use the map E to the I alpha. And in this case, that will be a rotation by alpha. So that will take uh, conformally, because a rotation is a conformal map, this omega alpha region to some region, which maybe I'll just write it like this, uh, which is now the argument is changed. Now these, uh, uh, these boundaries of this region are going to be uh, a little more friendly to us. So namely, this region which I've just written, I could kind of draw uh, maybe a dashed line along there and then maybe uh, another dashed line along here, and it would kind of look like that. So now we've rotated it, and now we just need to know how much to scale it. Well, if I'm trying to get it to the disk, then ultimately I could, I could use the Cayley transform if I have the upper half plane. And I'll remind you of what that is in a moment, but let's see if we can get the upper half plane. Well, we said that this z to the beta map is gonna be what we want but we wanna make sure that we're fanning it out the right amount. And it turns out that if we fan it out by pi over two alpha, then this means basically contract by two alpha and expand by pi. So in a heuristic sense, we've just come across the perfect conformal map, this kind of fanning and contracting to get it so that now this region I've drawn above is actually just gonna be the whole upper half plane and we don't include that, uh, that real axis. So now that we have the upper half plane, we can use the Cayley transform and I'll write that out for you, the Cayley transform. So a good uh, source for this would be maybe Wolfram Alpha uh, has, some, has some documentation on the Cayley transform. But just to recall it for you, it's this map that takes uh, z to i minus z um, and i plus z on the bottom. And that takes the upper half plane, which I'll write like this, to the disk conformally. 
Okay, so now if we perform these three operations on our original region, omega alpha, we get the disk. And then the only thing left to say is that the composition of conformal maps is conformal. Now, if your instructor, say, wanted an explicit formula for this, then all you would have to do is by hand compose those maps and then try and write out uh, maybe a nice, uh, concise, simplified version once you get to the very end. So it turns out that now that we've finished the very first problem, the second one is actually fairly quick, right? So the, the second one is asking us to take this strip to the disk. So if we can take the strip to a sector, then we're pretty much done because we can just apply the entire process of one again and compose it, uh, post compose it with those maps and then we'll get back the disk. So the map that we want, which takes this horizontal strip to a sector, something that looks like this, is actually E to the Z. And in fact, in, in our case, uh, we get that this, this uh, R region under E to the Z is actually mapped to everything but the non-positive real numbers. And then once we have this, well, this is technically, I mean, it might not look as nice as this sector here, but it's technically still a sector. And so all then we have to do is just apply one and we'll be done. And again, if you wanted to write out some kind of explicit formula for something like this, all you would do is, is plug in these functions and then uh, try and find maybe a nice simplified form to work with so that your instructor is, is happy with you.